Uh, hello everyone, I'm Zizi Yazid. Thanks for attending my talk. Today I will talk about one of the advanced component patterns called compound components. Before we go through on the actual content of the compound components, I will ask to have a little discussions. Imagine that if we has been assigned to create a background components that have uh, three different set of loop and fields and three different set of user experiences. So that as an experienced UI developer, we might come up with the uh, several options and one of them is by creating the three version of the background components. So background A, B and C. And then the, the most likely better is to combine everything into one single component and divides the code by variant called, by pro property called variance. However that, uh, I think for me and for us, it's quite tired to duplicate in the codes like we do on the option number ones, we have, we, which is that we have uh, three versions of the backgrounds. And then it's uh, quite complex when you have everything to the single components. We have a lot of like multiple uh, condition statements, logics. <coughs> That's why we uh, plan to use the compound component. Compound component basically is when you have uh, one component that handles uh, interactions and control the states of your components, and the rest of the component is just, just uh, in charge for the rendering items. So as you can see here is that, uh, so the parent, parent, the parent container is the one who provide the uh, container. So the, for example, the last uh, selected item is the states that will be used by the content of the breadcrumbs. And you can see is, uh, the difference between the compound component and others is that, even though we have the two versions of the breadcrumbs, we keep reuse the same container, which is the breadcrumbs, and the content is different because that the one who the one who implements the breadcrumbs, we decide how the breadcrumb uh, look and feels will be on the screens. So uh, I will show the a bit on the codes how to implement the compound components. Uh, test. Sorry. Hello. Right. So basically, you just need two things. The first one is the uh, parent container, the one that I will show here. So as you can see, we are using the ng template outlets uh, to inject the content of the ng template that uh, the implement has put, and then we inject the context of the templates. Uh, as the, the states of the component as the context of the templates. We are using the alias content child to get the ng templates, the one that we are using here. So what the con parent container do is that he just grab the ng templates and then we have inside the parent container, we have the, the method to manipulate the states. For example, the item clicks and the item hover. And the, what interesting is that the way they manage the state is implicitly. So, so that, as you can see inside the codes, it doesn't have the ng click or anything because it has been managed implicitly. So the other one is that is the background item that been used by the rendering items uh, to communicate with the parent container. So what they did, what we did is that we used the forward ref in order for, for us to get the reference of the parent container. The, what, the, what the forward ref is that he re forward the reference of the parent container and we will be able to get the context of the parent container. And by doing that, we have been able, from the, from the render from the rendering item, we will be able to get the, uh, item clicks and the item hover that have been defined inside the parent container. So that this is how we are clicking on the uh, background items or hovering on, on the background item, we'll be able to 
uh, manipulate or will be able to change the states of the the parent uh, the parent container. So to uh, to 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 simulate a bit on the diagram. So every time I click on the on the background item, what it does is that he just go to the container and click or, or not, not click or call the the methods for the containers. So I have scripted a sample of the codes here uh, that have the three differences of the parent container. Let me open up my step list. Oh man, the connection is not good there. Click. Sorry, uh, start this notes. <coughs> Let me open up the So I'm, I'm using the storybooks to show the backgrounds that I create. So this is the first version of the backgrounds. So you use the same things, which is the, uh, the same container. And we have the, the different of the loop and fields. And the background version B has the, also the different loop and fields, but use the same containers. So they use the selected items, which is the 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 states that uh, been put be from the container to the items. So they be able to use the the state like selected item and the highlighted items. And the third one is the another the background version. So that we have uh, so in the sum uh, in the summary is that uh, we we are quite a tired of creating the background. Every time the UX provider has passed the new version of the backgrounds, then we need to create the new ones. And in case that the UX provider gives you 10 versions of the background, then you need to create the trend version. So that's, that's not in the compound component. Because compound components uh, aim just, if you just create one background component, you just keep reuse even though you have the new backgrounds because you keep reuse the same container and then you decide what's to be on the contents. So use the background component for the flexibles of the UI and the simple API and then the, uh, the variety of your look and feel be able to, to accomplish. So that, let me check if I... Uh, I think that's all for my talk and thank you for listening.